is the reason why you should not be religious when you are walking with God. You can go to the place of prayer and shout for one hour and suddenly a grace comes upon you and you don't have the energy to shout again. Don't fight it. Sit quietly. Something is about to come. But because we have not been trained, you just feel, ah, I'm not, is it sleep? It's not necessarily sleep. In that stillness, His Majesty comes. A scripture comes. A word comes. An instruction comes. Check a YouTube video. An instruction comes. Check this scripture. An instruction comes. Read this book. Sometimes the instruction can just come as the name of someone. The name of a sermon. Even if it's a sermon you've listened to before. You finish praying for hours. Struggling your rent, everything. And whilst you are seated there. A testimony you had one day in Koinonia just comes to your spirit. It's how God speaks. This grace called favor. And it becomes strong upon your heart. God is saying, listen there. My voice for you is in that sermon. Although you were there when it was preached, you did not hear my voice there. Now you listen to it. You will hear something I will tell you that you did not hear that day. There are many ways God speaks to us. Because our hearing are in levels. Are we together? There are times that people become too noisy. God cannot even tell them anything. They finish talking to God and then they close the door. Their spirits are too noisy. Even their dream life cannot be an opportunity for God to minister to them. I have a teaching series, uh, you know, supernatural experiences, dreams, visions, trances. I will teach you. Because most of you, that thing you are calling a dream is an attack. Notice everything you have been seeing. When you stand up and do it, it gets you into trouble. Everything you see as an instruction in the dream, you act upon it, you either have a problem with police or have a problem with people, it's an attack. When God speaks, he speaks peace. When you get instructions in the realm of the spirit that continue to cause you trouble perpetually, you can measure the voice of God by the peace and progress it brings, which is what most people don't have. Don't just wake up from a dream and act everything you saw there. No. There are rules for both interpreting and acting on dreams. And the central rule is submitting everything to the word of God. Apostle, I had a dream. In the dream, I gave somebody my car. Hold on. Before you part with your car and now get into trouble. Don't assume it means God says you should give the car. We need to measure the spiritual life of the person who had the dream first. To verify what you had. With wise counsel, make war. Most people have gotten into trouble today. Let me tell you this. I hope you are learning the prayer of inquiry. There are people today who have believed a lie and they would, they would die believing that lie because the devil manipulated dreams, manipulated visions. Are we together? And because they do not understand how to engage this prayer of inquiry. The prayer of inquiry. Should I pursue? Should I overtake? Someone learn to ask God that question. No. You don't ask him for You can't ask God, should I wear a white dress or a black dress? God will say, no. Don't go and listen to say, uh, uh, apostles teaching success systems. And I teach you there how to use your mind. Are we together? Yeah. You can't come and meet God and say, should I wear a yellow shoe or a black shoe? No. I'm talking of destiny defining decisions. You want to carry your wife and children out of Nigeria? And the only thing that becomes a green light is visa stamped on your, your passport. That's a risk. That's a risk. What if the destiny helpers of your children are close to you? You need to find out. Lord, should I pursue? When Satan wants to stop you from hearing the voice of God, he will surround you with good things. So that you will think that every good thing there is just God. And you will act upon good things till they destroy you. It's not only evil Satan uses to destroy people. When he tests you with evil and he sees you are sensitive, he will bring good. The most important thing is that he's interested in your destruction. Either with evil or good. Hallelujah. For someone, you are at a very prophetic season of your life. There are a number of areas in people's lives where you have to take time to dig. Matters of marriage, children, matters, look at me, matters of finances, matters of job and career. Are we together? Matters of where you will stay, what you will be doing. 
the kind of call, your assignment, these major areas. Oh, you must pray. You must pray. You must pray. Lie down and roll from left to right and say, Father, speak. Speak, oh, speak. Speak. Am I an evangelist or am I a pastor? This one prophesied that I'm an evangelist. Next tomorrow, they said I'm a pastor. Be careful. This one said my wife is yellow. This other one said my wife is black. Oh, my wife is short. My wife is tall. Very soon, you will be like Solomon. You will marry one, 700 wives and, and uh, how many? Uh, 300 concubines. All in the name of prophecy. And they don't have to be fake. We see in part. So you go to God and cry your heart out. Open my eyes, oh God. Are we together? This job gives me 200,000. This one gives me 150,000. But uh, common sense said I should go here and you miss a season. Let me tell you, not every season is easily recoverable. I can tell you that. Are we together? Don't be careless and think some seasons. I'm, now, please don't, don't be offended. And, and I'm not here to forgive me. For instance, Missing it out in things like marriage is not easy. It, it will not be without scars. You get what I'm saying now? God tells you three children. You say, no, I know I'm going to give birth to seven. And the remaining four cause headache for you. You almost want to kill them yourself. Because God told you his recommendation. But he will never force you. I know what I'm saying is funny. But listen carefully to what I'm telling you. Take out time and pray. Take out time and pray. Koinonia, take out time and pray. Sensitive things in your life. Parents, which school should my child go to? Don't just say this school is a nice school. They will go and learn something that becomes the reason why they become a pain to your heart. Are we together? Lord, who should be the closest friend to me? Not, I like this person. Person is just nice. And before you know it, you draw demons, familiar spirits, and all kinds of causes to your destiny. The implication of friendship is that there is a sharing of spirits. Let me tell you, associations have prophetic implications. If you don't believe me, save Johnny. I will be here to correct you in the future again. Very destiny implicating consequences. If Jonah is in your boat, you will lose your goods, even if you're a hardworking businessman. You will almost lose your life till you throw him out. But if Jesus is in your boat, don't worry. Even if the storm rocks your boat, your confidence is that Jesus is in your boat. When Lot left Abraham, he was not unrighteous, but he still suffered. Is someone learning how? You don't like what I'm saying? Like it, oh? Like it seriously. I'm teaching you this is a school of prayer. Please go and write down some major areas in your life and flog it out. You need to fast fast. You will not die. Lord, help me. I've been seeing America in my vision. What does that mean? It does not mean go to America. It can mean your helper is in America. Or it can mean intercede for America. You can go to get a visa and for 10 years, you, your life refused to move forward because based on what you saw, truly, you had the dream. You saw America and you assumed, you gave it an interpretation from the flesh. Mm. Koinonia is quiet. Pray. Pray. As a husband, hold the hand of your wife and pray. We are fasting today. Lord, what is the next step? Even in ministry, don't assume. You've heard my story. For three years, I struggled with God to leave Zaria and come to Abuja. I didn't want to. I mean, God had glorified himself greatly in Zaria. People were literally coming from all over the world. Can you imagine? In spite of the security situation. I mean, it was at a point in ministry, you would say you had seen the grace of God. What is Abuja again? And you go to pray. Three days before the inaugural service in Abuja here, I still went to God in prayer and fasting. Lord, if for any reason I'm human, if it is my carnal mind, I vow unto you that I will close that in inaugural service. And I meant it. I meant it. The prayer of inquiry. Someone pray in one minute and say, Lord, guide my steps. Order my steps. Take a minute to pray. Order my steps.
I'm at a pivotal point. Those outside, are you praying? All the overflows. I am at a critical point in my life. No assumptions. The mistake of great men is assuming that God is always with what they are doing. Just because you succeeded yesterday in ministry, in life, in family, does not mean that you can invent any strategy and then succeed. You must be malleable to the voice of the Spirit per time, per season. Otherwise, you will crash land no matter how mighty you are. Nobody is too big to fall. Nobody is too big to fail. Nobody is too big to crash land. If you cannot inquire from the Lord and know what to do per major season of your life, I tell you, you can crash land in a way that it will look like you never rose up. Someone pray in one minute, order my steps. Speak to me. I am not a rebel. My heart is malleable. Speak to me. Go ahead and pray. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind? How can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit? How can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind? His power at work in you, changing everything in obedience to Christ. Recreating everything, you know.